Hello, I'm Gareth Messenger, welcome to Sports Week. And on this week's show, new beginnings for AFC Totten as they move into their new ground, Eastleigh face two top of the table rivals, and Winchester City edge closer to promotion of glory. We start with AFC Totten as they moved into their new home, the Testwood Stadium. The Stags were looking to cement their place at the top of the Zamoretto South and West against Porton Rovers. Michael Connolly was there. Here we are at the opening of AFC Totten's new ground. They'll be looking to start their campaign at their new home with a win as they play host to Porton Rovers. Totten's new ground includes an impressive new stand and a modern clubhouse, giving it a near 2,000 capacity. The new venue also includes an all-weather training pitch, putting the facilities up there with any other team in the Zamoretto League. The new ground seems to have been welcomed by the Totten faithful. I think it's absolutely yeah. excellent. You know, there's a lot of clubs that love this, you know, and I this mean, is what Totten wants, really. The facilities they've got, it means they can go up another league without having to do any modifications or anything. It's, everything about it is superb, and we've been waiting a long, long time for this. And, well, we have to and a packed Testwood Stadium were not disappointed when the Stags went 1-0 up after a goalkeeping error from Stan Burgess. It's Gosney with the corner here for Totten. Oh, oh, and it's gone in. The home side lead here at Testwood Park. The goal was later accredited to Totten's Mike Gosney. After a clever move down the wing, Gosney crossed well for Michael Charles to get his first and Totten's second of the game after 15 minutes. Michael Charles found himself on the score sheet again after a quick move, beating the offside trap and finishing well after 25 minutes. Totten continued to pile on the pressure and Michael Charles bagged his hat-trick after 35 minutes. Not headed clear by Rovers here, the ball is crossed in and, and it finds Charles, that's free for Michael Charles. But Poulton Rovers didn't give up and almost grabbed a goal just before half time, but were repeatedly denied by Totten goalkeeper Grant Porter from two corners. Stefan Brown went on to get Totten's fifth and arguably the best goal of the game 19 minutes into the second half. The ball is cleared by Totten. Brown is chasing after it and, and he gets there first. A lot to do here and. Oh, and that's a fantastic goal by Stefan Brown. Five-star performance here by FC Totten. Poulton managed to pull back a consolation goal only minutes later, Dan cleverly converting from this free kick. Michael Charles told us how his first game at the new stadium went. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, the, the, the old stadium was, you know, it was, it was Totten, do you know what I mean? But you, you ask any of the fans that have been here long, they, they wait, they've been waiting for this, and this, this is a massive day. And even going out on the pitch, you know, you could feel something, you could feel something, you know, they're, they're right behind you, they, they wanted this move. So yeah, I think it's just going to bring, bring the best out of any, in everyone. I mean, playing football, we've always wanted to play football when we're, when we're on the park. So I think having this surface, it's going, be, it's going to be perfect for us. So a great start here at Testwood Park with a 5-1 victory over Poulton Rovers, keeping AFC Totten at the top of the league. They look to continue their good form in the run into the end of the season. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. Eastley started the weekend sitting just in the playoff places, but they faced league leaders Braintree on Saturday and sixth place Dover three days later. Will Cooper saw both at the Silver Lake. After going five league games without defeat, Eastley FC looked to cement their playoff challenge against league leaders Braintree. But it was clear from the start that the away side were looking to take all three points from the Spitfires. The Iron have won three out of their last four, and Eastleigh were boxed into their own half for much of the early exchanges. Jamie Guy's effort almost deceived the home keeper. Soon after, former Colchester player Jamie Guy went through, and it was clear after his tumble with the goalkeeper he had sustained a horrific injury. In the meantime, he had earned his side a penalty. But everyone here at Winnell Sports wishes him a speedy recovery after his double leg fracture. Now after all that, can Bradley Quinton score from the spot? He can't! He struck it sweetly enough but the post has come to EC's rescue here. 
Well, missed kick by Potes has led him reason. He dinked it over the keeper and made it 2-0. The former Ipswich fan punishes Lotes for that defensive howler. After the opener, Braintree started the second period much the same. Stefan Payne so nearly doubling the lead. With one of the biggest home attendances of the season, Eastleigh were hanging on in this one. Stefan Payne bringing the best out of Nathan McDonald once again. When Eastleigh did get the ball in the back of the net, the linesman's flag denied Rivier his sixth of the season. Eastleigh began to press, but were mainly kept to long-range efforts by the iron defence. As the Spitfires pushed for the elusive equaliser, the defence were caught out again. Sean Marks being dragged down by McDonald. And the Eastleigh shot stopper was given his marching orders. Scott Shelton was then thrown in at the deep end. His first action of the game, picking a ball out the back of his own net. Braintree go further ahead at the top of the table, but Eastleigh's playoff challenge faced another test as Dover visited the Silver Lake on Tuesday night. And Eastleigh's luck was lacking as Dover started on the front foot. Coven has done well here and he's rounded Barfoot and he opens the scoring for Dover. What a start for the Whites. In an electric opening, both sides spurned opportunities to add to the scoreline. The prolific slabber fluffing his head up and not making the most as he went through on goal just a couple of minutes later. The Spitfires dominated for large parts of the first half, the White's goal leading a charmed life. Taggart should have maybe been more selfish as he went through on goal. The second half was a lot quieter, but Eastleigh still pressed the White's goal. And Dover did spawn the chance to go two ahead as Eastleigh pushed forward. Gareth Barfoot keeping the Spitfires in it with a stunning save. Baker's through, this could finish it. Save, but it's falling to Birchill and it's 2-0. And the points are heading back to Kent. Eastleigh's playoff chances are dented, but an away tie with Mainhead United on Saturday is a great chance to bounce back. William Cooper, Winchester News Online. Winchester City's prolific form in the Wessex League was given a stern test on Saturday as Fairham Town were the opposition. Then four days later, they went to Laverstock and Ford. Jake Gable and Amy Pickering saw the games. Winchester City Football Club has been awarded the Golden Ball Award for last month. The accolade is given to the best non-league team and is the second Winchester has won this season. Fairham Town were the visitors to the Den Plan on Saturday in what proved to be a feisty affair. Fairham's Graham Lindsay were the first chance of the game, his long-range effort palmed away by Winchester's Rory Anderson. Winchester made the breakthrough in the 20th minute courtesy of Mike Dixon. They're headed down, oh and it's in, it's Mike Dixon, Winchester have the lead here. But shortly after the restart, Fairham struck level with a set piece of their own. Oh and, and Thompson gets there first, goal for the away side, they've drawn level. Winchester pushed hard and very nearly took the lead just minutes later. But eventually, City's perseverance paid off. Substitute Sol Asagio crossing for Zach Glasspool. On his Glasspool, the home side are back in front of the Den Plan. The citizens were almost reduced to 10 men shortly after the restart. Midfielder Tom Dunford lucky to escape from this challenge with just a caution. But Winchester's lead was further extended in the 73rd minute. Mike Dixon taking a tumble in the box after a rash challenge from Fairham goalkeeper Luke Douglas. Skipper Gary Faulkner stepped up to secure all three points for the citizens. Faulkner steps up here. Bottom left-hand corner. That's free for Winchester. The victory extended Winchester's lead at the top of the Wessex Premier Division to 12 points. After being unbeaten in nine games, Winchester travelled to Laverstock and Ford in the hope of continuing their good run. Laverstock soon took the first half initiative. And Laverstock are putting on the pressure. It's Lewis. Laverstock in front. Coleman with no chance. After the break, the game started scrappily. This Jamie Brown tackle typical of the second half. But Winchester came back into the game. 
It's Burn, the Lavastock keeper in no man's land, the league leader's back level. In a tightly contested game, however, Lavastock once again took the initiative. Lewis with a great chance, slips it home, Lavastock retake the lead. Tensions boiled over in the last few minutes, Tom Dunford seeing rep for this rash challenge. Winchester remain top of the table, but will have to up their game if they're looking to attain the Golden Boot of February. Amy Pickering, Winchester News Online. That's all your sport for this week. Join us next week for more of the best non-league coverage in the South. Goodbye.